Hey everyone, it's Blackfire. Battlefield 1 has done a terrific job bringing the Great War to life. Players have traveled to the trenches of Verdun and to the skies over the North Sea. But where does Battlefield 1's map design truly shine with reference to actual historical locations and events? Here are my top five historical locations brought to life in Battlefield 1. At number five is Cape Helles. Many players have a love-hate relationship with this map, but DICE managed to capture the Entente attack on the beaches of Gallipoli with impressive detail. Developers included a number of references to the real-world location, including the Sed El Bar Fort, the SS River Clyde, and massive coastal artillery. Sed El Bar Fort, or Fort No. 3, endured a heavy bombardment prior to the landings, but held ferociously as the British landed under fire, many of them from the SS River Clyde. The River Clyde in Battlefield 1 serves as one of the main spawn locations for British troops and provides a direct but exposed route to the beach, much as it did in real life over 100 years ago. The ship was deliberately run aground to serve as a Trojan horse and land troops on the beaches. Unfortunately, it was also square in the sights of the defenders at Sed El Bar. The Ottomans also did have coastal artillery active in the peninsula, which dueled with British dreadnoughts just as they do in Battlefield 1. The map's Conquest Assault game mode makes it more realistic as well, since the amphibious landings at Gallipoli were the largest of its type until the famous Normandy landings of World War II. Meanwhile, the general map layout for Cape Helles even bears a striking resemblance to the actual fortifications of 1915. At number four is Fort DeVoe. From Battlefield 1's French DLC, They Shall Not Pass, Fort DeVoe adds an atmosphere similar to the Metro or Locker maps from previous Battlefield games. The map also mimics the real-world location quite well, striking a good balance between gameplay and realism. Having visited Fort DeVoe in real life, DICE captured the close-quarters nature of combat on the map. The interior has been scaled up when compared to the actual location, but the barracks, entrance, and exterior ditches were recreated with impressive detail. Another aspect of the map developers nailed was sound design. Even small noises thunder down the stone hallways of the fort, so believe it or not, the ear-splitting explosions you hear in Battlefield 1 were actually more intense for the soldiers who really fought there. Outside, the exterior of the fort is also particularly striking. Grass now covers the craters at the site, but at the height of the battles for control of the fort, its trenches and slopes closely resembled what is shown in Battlefield 1. Visiting Fort DeVoe was the highlight from my trip to Verdun, so if you'd like to see a more in-depth comparison, click the link here on the screen. Coming in third is Saritsyn. One of the more memorable maps from the Russian DLC in the name of the Tsar, Saritsyn features close combat in the city's cathedral. Now, the actual cathedral at Saritsyn was demolished by the communist government in the 1930s, so DICE elected to use the Kronstadt Naval Cathedral as inspiration for the map. That cathedral is located in St. Petersburg, Russia, and bears a striking resemblance to the one that appears in Battlefield 1. Developers carefully mimic the cathedral's design, even copying the artwork and dome. Although the cathedral on Saritsyn isn't true to the original design, the layout of the map is quite accurate to the actual location of the church within the city. It was located near the Volga River and surrounded by a large park, both of which appear in Battlefield 1. In second place is Ballroom Blitz. This map features fighting amongst the halls of a stunning French chateau. Battlefield 1 developers modeled the map after the Chateau de Chantilly in Chantilly, France. Now, it's not an actual replica of the location, but DICE clearly took inspiration from the architecture, incorporating designs from the main chateau as well as the grand stables. The Chateau de Chantilly also features impressive courtyards, which developers clearly sought to mimic in the map's overall design. 
The Chateau de Chantilly wasn't the site of an actual battle in World War I, but it did house French military headquarters for a time, and the estate was also home to a camouflage workshop. Finally, the number one spot goes to Zeebrugge. I've just been completely blown away by how closely DICE was able to design the map to the actual raid in World War I, while still balancing the map and adding some creative flourishes. Developers closely mirrored the mole's design, down to the lighthouse, shipyard cranes, and the breach made from the explosive-laden British submarine C-3. Developers even added the cannons used to defend the mole from enemy attack. DICE also did an impressive job recreating HMS Vindictive. The antiquated cruiser attacked the mole directly during the raid, sustaining heavy damage as troops attempted to land from wooden gangways. Even on the Belgian shores, there is extensive attention to detail. Developers added shore batteries, and if you look out of bounds in the actual canal, you can see the wrecks of HMS Iphigenia and HMS Intrepid. These British ships were deliberately sunk to block German U-boat traffic at the base. For more info on the actual Zeebrugge raid, click the link here on the screen. All of these examples are testament to the legwork done by DICE when researching locations to bring to life in Battlefield 1 maps. I'm sure I'm not the only one who loves exploring the history resurrected by developers. Which Battlefield 1 map is your favorite for history? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that really helps out the channel. There are of course other ways to support the channel, such as sharing on Facebook or Twitter. To take your Battlefield 1 game to the next level, check out the Battlefield 1 Ultimate Utility app with a link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching.